Good number, 12 months above 400K. Everybody's celebrating that. Still a lot of head scratchers, though, on why average hourly earnings came in a little bit light. Um, any thoughts? No, I mean, I think that we've seen good job growth throughout this year. Uh, I mean, sorry, good wage growth throughout this year. I can't really specify on, on a one-month period why that number dipped. I think it was two-tenths of a percent. Uh, but overall, we're very happy, very pleased with this report. Clearly, we're looking to the future, and I, I don't think that this is this kind of momentum won't be able to keep going as far as as far as we're going to go back to some type of normal reporting and no, normal economy eventually here uh, with the growth gain. But we're seeing it in, in in the manufacturing sector. We saw some great growth. We're very happy about that. We saw some good growth in retail as well, not just the the, the commerce side or the online side. We saw it in, in the stores. So, I mean, there's a lot of good things in this report, but clearly we know that there's still uh, much work to be done as we continue to, to move forward here. The other head scratcher is, is labor force participation, which we were beginning to see some signs of momentum. It made sense that labor supply was improving, but we came in light there as well. What do you think? Yeah, you know, we, we talked about that this morning. You know, this is, I think, the first time since May of last year we saw that number go down. So, obviously, we, we, I asked for a deeper dive in to look at those numbers to see if, if there's specific regions of this country that we're seeing participation lower than others. Clearly, in the, in the hospitality area, we saw a little less participation that we would have liked. That's, that, that, that region is not, that area is not fully covered yet. Uh, but again, you know, when you look at these reports, it's hard to go month by month and really, really panic. I wouldn't say panic. Panic's too strong of a word. Uh, be as concerned about it. This is a kind of a long-term uh, re recovery or, or, or rebuilding of America. 95% of the pre-pandemic workforce is back to work. So that's a, that's a positive sign. Mr. Secretary, look, in another time, this would have been an absolutely great set of numbers, but I am now in the camp that the working person is beginning to get hurt by inflation pretty badly. And I don't know how else to get that inflation down other than make it so the economy slows. Is there another solution that you have to make it so the working person doesn't get hurt by inflation? No, I, you know, listen, I, I can't disagree with what you just said. I, I think that at the kitchen tables all across America, one of the biggest issues, if not the biggest issue in every household, is inflation. It's the cost of gas. It's the cost of food. It's the cost of everything that they have today. Uh, we all know, I can try and spin this, we all know why it's happened because of the pandemic supply chain issues. But the president has been laser focused. He's going to Ohio today uh, to talk about uh, about creating more opportunities for manufacturing, to do more supply and more building here in America, be more dependent on America. That will help us long term. The short term issues, we're working at this at a whole bunch of different pieces. We're working, you know, the Fed's working on it. The president supports the Fed policies. One issue I hope that I wish Congress would support the president's slate that, that's going to be, be appointed at the Federal Reserve. Uh, we're working on supply chain questions. We're, you know, doing everything we can within our power. Uh, this is, and this is not, you, you'll talk about this all day today. This isn't just a, an American issue. This is a global issue with inflation. Yes, we're a little higher than other parts of the country. But again, we're also more dependent on, on foreign imports, which we, we shouldn't be. Well, Mr. Secretary, let, let's take an industry that punches well above its weight that I think you and I know, the American dream, owning a house. Uh, housing prices have gone up 25% year over year. Uh, and now, obviously, mortgage rates are going up. Is it, is it uh, not uh, ironic that we actually need to see housing cool off so that Americans can afford to buy a house again? And yet, to do that, it would require layoffs and slow down in housing. And how do you deal with this really difficult balancing act? Well, I think there's another way of obviously bringing housing prices down, and that's increasing supply, because the demand is there. And I certainly know that in my former job, one of the things that we had was, was pressures on people being able to buy a home, particularly first-time homeowners. They weren't able to, they were being priced out of communities and neighborhoods all across Boston. It's happening all across the country. And quite honestly, as a nation, we haven't made a major investment in housing in, in a long time. And now's the time to think about reevaluating that and making major investments in housing, not just on, on government housing, but also making private sector housing. And that would, that would take us all to go around the country to look at, our, look at our zoning laws and look at all the different laws. I know when I was the mayor, we put together a plan to create 69,000 units of new housing by the year 2030. That number started at 52,000, and we quickly shattered that number. So th th that's a supply, a lot of that is a supply and demand issue. 
But uh, the big home builders would tell you that they're giving her all she got. You mentioned the zoning regulations. That would allow them to put up more. But most of the big home builders, they're doing everything they can, but they can't finish the homes because they're selling homes that don't have dishwashers and, and, and don't have washing machines because they have supply chain problems. I mean, it, it is a curious conundrum well, that you that's need today. housing that's, to slow down. That's today. The supply chain issues are today. But back three years ago, we would we were trying, you know, we didn't have, there wasn't good housing policies in this country, enough across the country in cities and towns and governments all across the country. And part of that is a federal government issue. Part of that's also a local issue. When, when you thought about pre-pandemic, the amount of people that were moving into urban America, the numbers were the, probably the highest in the history of our country for the well, maybe not since the beginning, but in, in a long time. And, and that trend right. still continues today. So we need, we need to really think about housing policies that work so we can create opportunities for moderate, low, middle-income housing. Those are the issues in the spaces that, that we really need to think about. That, that's a potential crisis that is not caused by this administration. That has been a lack of housing policy for a long time in this country.